Congratulations, I'm almost ready to go home. So this video is on um, managing your um, pain control and analgesia requirements on discharge. So no doubt um, now that you've been in hospital for a while, you've noticed that we've been giving you a bit of a cocktail of medications. Um, and that's on purpose, that's called polypharmacy. Um, and the reason why we like giving a cocktail like that is that um, uh, if we're not reliant on a single medication, at a really high dose, then we tend not to see so many side effects. So what we do is we use a number of different analgesics that all have um, um, like their own roles, um, and then we attack the problem from a number of different angles. And that way we tend to see that there's a, a lower risk of side effects from any one of the medications um, that we give you. So um, when you leave hospital, the medications that you'll be discharged with um, are indeed the same ones that you've been taking um, whilst in the hospital. Um, and uh, obviously as time goes on, um, as your analgesic requirements um, go down because your pain is getting less, um, then you just don't need to take those medications quite so often. Um, and so the recommendations for your analgesic are um, take them on an as required basis. As your pain starts to get better, you can start tapering those medications off. We don't want you to take the medications continuously, uh, particularly if you don't have um, significant discomfort that, uh, that necessitates analgesic um, administration. The medications that we'll be giving you will be um, uh, in three main groups. There's um, paracetamol preparations, um, so it's like Panadol Osteo, um, and that's a really good baseline medication. So generally that's the weakest of our preparations, um, but it forms a really good um, overlying platform for the use of other medications. So um, when you go home, you will be sent home with some paracetamol preparations. So I re recommend that you take them regularly. Now, on top of that, there'll be some other stronger analgesics that you'll need to take from time to time. And um, they will include um, likely two different medications. One is Targan. Um, so Targan is an opiate analgesic. Um, so it's a little bit like morphine. Um, it's a uh, long acting medication, so it has a sustained release. Um, and so that's used as a baseline medication. So uh, a lot of people like to take Targan because it gives you very even pain control throughout the day. The medication that you'll use for um, breakthrough discomfort um, is either Endone or Tramadol. So um, both of those medications are a little bit shorter acting. Um, they're a little bit quicker in onset um, and they're used as an adjunct on top of your other baseline medications. So as time goes on, you're going to find that your analgesic requirements are going to decrease and you're going to be able to step back your uh, analgesic use. Um, continue taking um, regular paracetamol. Um, it's a weak analgesic, um, but it's very um, safe and it doesn't have any um, tolerance or addictive side effects. Um, so that's a good baseline to continue with. The medications that we probably want you to step back earlier are things like Endone and also Targan. So both of those are um, are opiate analgesics and they do have uh, addiction um, capacity and also um, tolerance is seen if you start taking them for extended durations of time. So um, when you're at the point where your analgesia is, um, is pretty good, then what you might do is you might start stepping back your target because your general pain relief is getting better and then you're probably not going to need your endone quite as often for your flare-ups. So ideally we try to get people off um, opiate analgesics usually within about seven to 10 days after, uh, after joint replacement surgery. But that is variable. Some people is, it's a little bit earlier. Some people it, they need them for a little while longer. It's important to re-emphasize um, that your walking aids are a really important adjunct to your analgesia. So um, if you get rid of your crutches too early, you're going to be at more risk 
of having episodes of um, significant muscular irritation around the around the hip joint. So, um, as a general rule, to be able to keep your um, analgesic requirements down um, and to give you a bit more of a, a smoother recovery uh, in terms of um, pain, um, then um, don't be in a rush to get rid of your walking aids and your and your stick. At least using a, a single stick in the opposite hand for a while is a, a good idea until. Um, you've had a, a good chance of, of recovery. There are some step-down analgesics uh, that you can use once you get uh, to the point where you don't require Targan or Endone anymore. And a common one medication that we would use in that respect is Tramadol. And uh, that's used as a substitute analgesic uh, for people who are not requiring the stronger analgesics anymore, but it's probably a little bit more than what paracetamol alone um, can get on top of. There are some people that aren't um, tolerant of some of the medications that we've uh, tried in hospital. Um, they might be having problems, for instance, with um, nausea or um, allergies, for instance, like a rash um, or sedation or low blood pressure, things like that. So um, if you're one of those people, um, that's okay because we've got lots of other alternatives and um, we will, um, uh, we'll trial some of those medications whilst you're in hospital so that um, when you go home you can use those alternative analgesics.